So thank you everybody for joining today the webinar How to Archive with EMC Info Archive. My name is uh, Christian Meyer. I'm a senior consultant at FME and I'm also responsible for the EMC Documentum Competency Center at EMC uh, at FME. I work for FME several years and uh, are located in Braunschweig, Germany. With me today is Dennis Graf. He's also a senior consultant at FME. Uh, he's very familiar with the entire EMC IIG uh, product line. And Mike Uhlenberg. Mike is a product consultant at FME. Uh, he's responsible for the development of our product migration center and has also developed the adapter uh, for Info Archive. He works also for FME several years and is located in Braunschweig, Germany. So what we cover today in this webinar, uh, first of all I want to give you a short overview about FME, uh, what we are and what we are doing. After that um, I want to explain Info Archive only on a few slides, so a short overview um, for those of you who have never heard uh, about Info Archive. Uh, the second topic then is OAIS. Uh, this is a standard uh, which is implemented in Info Archive. And then the main topic, the demo, how to archive content from SharePoint to EMC Info Archive with the Migration Center and uh, how to search uh, the archived information within Info Archive as well as some uh, technical, um, technical details about Info Archive. And at the end, the Q&A session um, of this webinar. So, first of all, we want to talk a bit about FME, what we do, uh, who we are. We are located worldwide. Our headquarters is in Braunschweig, Germany. Um, in Germany, we have also offices in Munich, Frankfurt and Cologne. We have a development office in Romania, in Cluj, and we have an office in the United States in Danbury, Connecticut. We focus on ECM. Uh, we partner, uh, we mainly partner with EMC Documentum for ECM for the entire IRG product line. Uh, we provide consulting services and also solutions for EMC IRG. Uh, we have one EMC certified product called Migration Center. This is uh, EMC certified. <coughs> Uh, we focus also on business intelligence. Uh, there we partner with Click, uh, formerly Click Tech, now Click. And for Click, we also provide services as well. And we focus on um, individual software development. Uh, that means that we develop a lot of custom software uh, for our customers. FME uh, was founded in 1995, and we have currently 150 employees worldwide. So with this short overview, I want to switch um, to the main topic for today, uh, Info Archive. Let's talk about some enterprise changes you have today. So we see at our customers that uh, our customers have to manage uh, the large and growing volume of information. And this um, large and growing volume of information um, costs a lot of <coughs> money for storage costs, for backup costs. The data must be still uh, accessible. Uh, for example, you have legacy application which cost a lot of money and uh, have only a limited value for you uh, as well as um, you have to ensure regulations to be compliant. So these are typical enterprise challenges our customers have today. When we see at a cust uh, at a typical customer environment, <coughs> we see of course legacy applications which have high costs but only limited value and often these applications are only used in read-only mode. So the data must be still accessible but uh, no new um, data uh, will be uh, created in this system. In addition to that we have the active application, the productive applications uh, which um, have the um, most expensive infrastructure. So servers, uh, storage systems and, and backup systems of course. That means when your data will grow in the upcoming years also your IT costs will increase dramatically. In addition, 
um, the data must be still accessible and uh, you as an IT department uh, have to ensure our regulations are to be compliant. For these challenges, EMC has developed EMC Info Archive. EMC Info Archive is a single unified archive uh, for enterprises. Uh, with EMC Info Archive, you can archive structured and unstructured content as well as a combination of both. It covers all application types, that means you can archive any kind of content and information um, in Info Archive. The design or the architecture of EMC Info Archive <coughs> um, uses less um, resources, less infrastructure than your legacy systems and uh, your, uh, your um, live systems. That means that EMC Info Archive reduces also your TCO. It is designed um, for enterprise needs. That means that you can archive um, a lot of a lot of data. So it is designed that um, you have one archive for all your data in your info, uh, in your company. And of course, it provides a um, search interface for uh, accessing the information you have archived. In addition, EMC Info Archive provide um, retention features that you meet your compliance needs for your archive data. Um, EMC Info Archive mainly addresses two use cases. The first use case is application decommissioning and the second use case is live archiving. Let us start with application decommissioning. What does it mean for you? That mean that you uh, have to migrate the data of your legacy applications to EMC Info Archive and after that migration you can shut down legacy systems to eliminate costs of these systems. The second use case is live archiving. That means that your productive systems have a high percentage of inactive data uh, which is still on your active applications but is inactive and will not be edited anymore. These inactive data um, produces a lot of costs because your active applications run on the most expensive infrastructure in your company. With live archiving, you can migrate these inactive data to Info Archive and, of course, increase the application performance and decrease storage costs and backup costs. Um, with this, or when you um, execute these two use cases, your data can still grow and your IT cost uh, will shrink due to um, lower, lower costs and the elimination of, um, of costs of your legacy systems and active applications. Another advantage is that the data is still accessible and that you can ensure regulations to be compliant. That means your data is still accessible, it is archived in um, Info Archive and you can ensure regulations. So let's talk about OAIS. OAIS stands for Open Archival Information System. This is the ISO standard. Um, the first ISO standard is from 2003 and the latest is from 2012. Um, this standard or OIS was initiated by space agencies in the 90s and um, uh, is a standard since 2003. OAIS is a reference model for long-term digital archive. That means it is a description um, of, an, of an archive. OAIS describes elements, concepts and defines uh, terminology of an, of an archive. It's not an implementation description, uh, it only is a reference model. Now I want to explain you a little bit about um, the different data, data packages of Info Archive. This is very important to know how you must prepare your data um, to archive it to Info Archive. So this um, OAS standard 
describes different data packages. When you archive data to InfoArchive, you have to create zip packages. Zip stands for Submission Information Package. And a zip package is a, a package or container which contains of the zip descriptor file. And this is a file which includes information about the package, which is important for searching, classification, retention management, and the ingestion priorization. And of course, the zip data, the data you want to archive to InfoArchive. <coughs> the zip data consists of AIUs, this stands for Archive, this stands for Archive Information Units. And each AIU consists of XML files or of an XML file and of a content file if you want to archive content. Um, before you archive data, you have to define the XML file through a schema. That means uh, you have to prepare um, the schema, you have to define the information you want to archive. In the demo, we will show later that the Migration Center will create the zip packages for you uh, and also the XML files um, uh, which are necessary um, for this zip package. Here we see um, a high-level architecture slide of, of InfoArchive and uh, the different information packages OAIS describes. So, um, I've already mentioned that OAIS describes um, different, different entities of an archive. Um, EMC Info Archive implement these different entities. So on the left side we have the ingestion module. The ingestion module is um, responsible to ingest the zip packages to Info Archive. On the right side we have um, the data access module, uh, which is responsible to search uh, for archive data. And in the middle we have the archive services and the archive storage. Um, when you ingest uh, data to info archive, it must be a zip package. So um, it is called zip. Uh, after the ingestion process, it is uh, archived and then the same package or the same container is called AIP, uh, Archive Information Package. This is the same data, the same container, but uh, with a different name. And when you search data in info archive, then uh, zip packages will be created. So this stands for data information packages. So this is uh, a necessary OAIS vocabulary uh, to understand um, how EMC Info Archive work and um, how, um, how how data is, is archived. Now I want to switch to Dennis, um, who will present you uh, some technical details about uh, Info Archive. And, and show you, uh, of course, um, a short demo of, of InfoArchive. Okay, hello everyone from my side. Um, the first thing I will have to do is uh, tell you one more word you will need to know about InfoArchive, and this is the word holding. As we learned from Christian, um, InfoArchive is the, the unified archive for an enterprise, so um, within InfoArchive you set up so-called holdings that are like buckets for different types of data. Um, so um, you could have a bucket for your project documents, for marketing material, for invoices, for uh, for transactional data, and, and everything else you can think you can think of. So um, the holding is um, to catch up on one of the words uh, Christian just said: um, a container for similar SIPs or SIPs um, within InfoArchive. And um, this is something you configure in, within the system and. Um, it contains sorry, it consists of several different configuration files like uh, the actual holding configuration. Um, you have a storage folder, some processing information, um, an XML schema for the metadata that um, that will go into the archive, and um, of course configuration for accessing the archive data, like uh, how you search and how you display it. And there's a lot more optional configuration that would probably um, we will probably not be able to, to tell you within the one hour that we have right now. Uh, this is the administration web application of, of InfoArchive. Um, the administration or the configuration is pretty much, much done with a few files which are located somewhere within this tree and uh, the archive holdings. 
and um, I will, we will show you today a holding called Office, which is just a container for any kind of Office information or Office documents. Um, the first thing I would like to show you is the holding configuration, uh, which is, uh, like I said, the base configuration file and just holds information like how the file, for file format looks like. So this is a zip, as you can might be able to see here, um, how the process or the ingestion configuration is, is done, uh, where all the files are stored, what the XML schema is, um, and then all this kind of information um, which Info Archive needs to, to store your data within the archive. Um, there's quite a lot, as you can see, and there's even more on the single tabs, um, which uh, I cannot explain at this point because it's, it's simply too much, so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, the next thing is the so-called PDI, which is a simple XML document, um, which tells Info Archive how you want your metadata to be processed. Um, you, will see, you see, if, if you're familiar with XPath, you will see some XPaths in here, XPath um, information. If you want your metadata to be compressed in the archive and everything else. Um, so um, again, there's a lot of details here that you can, that you can um, configure here, um, just to give you a short idea of what things look like. Um, the, the central part of, of every holding is the schema. Um, which is the which is a plain XML schema um, where you describe what your XML metadata looks like. Um, we have the example for the office documentation uh, office documents here. Uh, so we have a department and keywords, a format, some author. Um, we will probably see the XMLs later on in this uh, in this session. So um, it's a, it's a simple XML schema um, that you might actually be familiar with already. Um, well, this is the the minimum configuration that you need for an info archive holding. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot more. There's some query information which um, which um, explains how you want to search for your metadata, what types of search you want to do, and um, how this uh, how this is um, adjusts to the database, which lies behind all this. Uh, there's a uh, a style sheet that will control how your um, metadata is presented to you. Uh, when you when you perform a search, we will see all that um, towards the end of this session. Um, and um, well, um, there are a few more configuration files. Uh, this is actually not all you can configure in the system, but there's quite a lot. Um, just wanted to give you the impression of what configuring an old uh, and holding it within Info Archive looks like. Um, this is it from me for now and I will switch back to Mike. Okay, yeah, thanks for this short introduction, Dennis. Yeah, hello everybody also from my side, my name is Mike and I will show you the migration center um, and explain it for you in a nutshell. So, yeah, what we're, we will see the info archive system later because um, as you may know we want to migrate now our archive files from SharePoint to uh, info archive and we will be you know, we will use the migration center for it so what what is the migration center only a few slides two slides left and we will go into into detail in, in action so um, yeah the migration center is an out of the box uh, solutions so software it's called migration center because um, yeah it's it's quite a center with many adapters so we have um, uh, you know, such a system with adapters source adapters and target adapters what you see here on the in the diagram you see on the left our um, or a list of our not, not not all of these but of our source adapters and on the right side you see the target adapters so the migration center um, consists of two component of three components actually one Oracle database what you see in the middle there as a central um, data store um, then you you have one or several clients and as as well you have one or several job servers which are responsible for the actual processing of the import or export of documents we call it scan and import. Yeah, client database and uh, server. Yeah, so um, basically these adapters can be combined um, as migration passes. So you you can um, yeah come from let's say anywhere there and go wherever you want. Today um, yeah we will go into info archive, but you will see that in the demo. 
As a migration center, as Christian already mentioned, is EMC certified. It's also um, certified by EMC for Info Archive. I think it is the first or one of the first products which is in, uh, certified for Info Archive. And um, yes, we have yeah uh, very or oh, many supported systems as well. So yeah, let's jump to the next slide. So um, this is just a, a brief overview. Let's say what we do. Um, next here in the demo. So um, Christian already told you a lot of, of this information. So we have on-premise application here. In this, in this case we will have uh, SharePoint and, and you may know um, these facts so that you may have high data volume which decrease the performance and increase the complexity. complexity. The backup cost, storage and maintenance cost increase by time. And so, info archive or archive systems in general are there to to yeah to help here. Um, so in this case, in the demo, we will we will show um, somehow, let's say in short or in brief, how you can uh, divide inactive content, so content to be archived or or decommission uh, content into info archive and um, yeah, deselect, let's say, or filter out the active content which can stay on the system or even be migrated to another um, yeah, live system, so where the users are working on and do changes. So yeah, this, this, is, this is the goal for the demo, let's say, for the practical one. So we will yeah, use the migration center to migrate data from SharePoint to info archive. So now um, we are on a, on a yeah, virtual machine here in our network environment, and um, yeah, this is a migration center setup. The setup is done with the three servers. So we have the database installed in the network, um, as well as job servers for the processing and, and the migration center client here. Yeah, first of all, I w want to show you um, where we come from. So this is our SharePoint example here. This is SharePoint 2013 and we will scan this uh, bank customer library within this folder structure here. It's just a yeah, basic example folder structure with some folders um, yeah, let's say divided by customer and, uh, and kind of documents yeah, and as well with some documents in it. Okay, so yeah, this is our source. Okay, so the next step is, let's say, you start the migration center client. The migration center system works as it, as it is, um, yeah, where the only entry point is the migration center client, let's say. So you do all configuration um, and, and transformation and metadata um, manipulation. You do it with the migration center client, so you don't, don't need to do any scripting or developing or configuration besides the migration center or without the migration center client in general. So, so the first step you do with the migration center is yeah, you connect to the Oracle database, so it's already done here, um, and you see it in the top bar. And the next step is you um, add job servers to tell the migration center where the jobs should be processed on which machine. So in this case we have three uh, job servers added, and I will use this EN job server here, which you see where the status is available. So this is a kind of a pre-configuration. So the next step then is to create a scanner um, to yeah, collect files from the source system and bring them or scan them into the migration center. So let me just click on scanners here. I already prepared the scanner. We will come to that in a second. First of all, I want to show you how to create a new scanner here. So you just click on new, give it a name and then you choose a yeah, corresponding adapter type. So in this system we have installed these adapters. It's not all adapters we have, but you see we have file system, for example, Documentum eRoom Database, Outlook SharePoint, and yeah, also another Documentum adapter. And uh, according to your what you choose here, you will see a populated list of parameters corresponding to the yeah, actual adapter. So in this case, we have some file system attributes. If you scan Documentum, we will have yeah, Documentum yeah, parameters or let's say Documentum features. And in our case, we want to scan a SharePoint, so I choose SharePoint here, and there you go with SharePoint parameters. Um, yeah, first of all, we have that web service URL to connect to SharePoint, username, password, and then you um, 
enter include libraries, so the libraries you want to scan at this point. And after that you can also exclude uh, things like content type, by file extension, or um, yeah, system attributes. Yeah, you can also compute the checksum when you scan. Many adapters have this checksum uh, feature, so you can compute the checksum of the content files, uh, and which can be used to either detect duplicates um, before you actually import, or and also used, and this is more important maybe, to um, yeah, check the checksum after the import to be sure that the content was transferred um, successfully, um, yeah, hundred percent, and, and was not damaged or or corrupted, um, yeah, meanwhile, the migration. This is this box. Okay, the next uh, parameter here is the export location, so this is quite important to understand the migration center system. Um, yeah, we, we scan uh, such a source system like SharePoint or Ifresco or Documentum, for example, and we get uh, the content files uh, on this file share here. We, we export the content to this location and we um, store every or all metadata, all attributes and, and such in, in our migration center database. So after you've scanned um, such a library, you could um, shut down the SharePoint source system uh, and switch it off because migration center has everything what it needs at this point. All right, so I already prepared this scanner here. It's, it's this SharePoint bank customer scanner. I just entered some uh, credentials as well as a bank customer uh, library, which we have seen already. And um, we have um, in the network a temporary file store location here, as well as we excluded some more um, system attributes. Yeah, once um, such a scanner is configured, you can simply click on run to let it run. And um, yeah, it will now n n not scan any documents because we already scanned this, so this is also a good hint. So the Migration Center keeps track of um, all kind of content or documents, so in which state they are or if they have um, scanned already. So it means the Migration Center will would only detect changes now in this scan because it knows it has already scanned these 900 uh, documents at this point. At any point you can, um, at any time, let's say you can see an overview of all running jobs and also can pause or stop these um, and see also a percentage uh, progress here. So let me just stop this this update scan. It won't um, find anything either. So, okay, all right. We have um, so previously scanned. I did it today. Uh, Nine hundred objects here, and you can always have a look to the scanned objects. And here we have a typical migration center data grid to see the attributes which we have scanned from SharePoint now. So our demo data is not very, very well, let's say, prepared, but we have um, attributes um, here we can use with, uh, within our transformation. So in general, we collect all or any um, available attributes from SharePoint which can be used in a transformation to merge into new attributes or object types yeah, to fit the new target um, system at the end. You can also, for your convenience, you can show and hide columns to just have a look on some, um, yeah, some view and you can all the time export all these values to a CSV file um, to yeah, share the data with other departments. Okay, you will see such a data grid in a second again. So now comes the important steps. The next step is to create a migration set or a so-called mix set in short. Um, this is a, a unit, let's say, you want to process at this time in, in such a group. And so this is also the point where you divide, um, let's say, active content with um, yeah, and, and inactive content, for example, where you can do this. So I already pre prepared a mix set here, but let me just quickly show you to create a new one. It's fairly simple. Give it a name, and then you choose an appropriate uh, yeah, migration pass. Um, this is everything we have installed here. So, and then you go on with the tabs. So let me just open the pre-configured one. So this one here, we choose SharePoint to Info, Ar Info Archive. Give it a name, and then we go ahead with a file scan selection. So now I will see all um, scans which were done on a SharePoint system. So here I already added these. And then now I have 900 here in my mix set. So now I can go on with exclude objects by values. 
That means I can um, exclude objects by attributes. Here you see a distinct list of attributes uh, and also a distinct list of um, um, values, possible values on the right. And so you can easily um, yeah, exclude objects where you know the attribute this and that, for, for example, author or a special content type or whatever should be excluded in this mix set. So you can um, handle these later on. Yeah, additionally, you can set up advanced filters where you can combine, um, yeah, let's say, complex work conditions. For example, you take um, take a date, and this makes sense in an archive uh, migration, for example. If you say we only need content which is older than, I don't know, 10 years, or what was not modified for 10 years from now, you could easily um, yeah, put, put here a date condition in, and I don't know, say we need content before or from 2010, like this. September, whatever, doesn't matter now, and combine this uh, condition with a um, yeah, smaller date stuff from today, maybe. And so you can uh, imagine how you can really set up or filter your document scope um, to be or to only process the files which really need needs to be archived or which is really somehow dead content or passive content at this point. So let me. Just for the demo, delete these filters, and um, I put some exclude filters in here. So in this case, I just use contract type now, and I exclude all of these here to have only this one included. And let's have a preview of the objects. You, it's about hundred, I guess, only for demo purposes. So yeah, it's 117 objects here, which will will be used now in this mix set. So let's just save this, select the objects, and now the Migration Center keeps track of, tracks of, uh, track of these objects and make sure that these are only handled in that mix set and cannot be added to another one. For example, this is my passive content, content now and I could now use the, the yeah, other content or the rest of it, for example, I don't know, to migrate into another SharePoint system and then here I would select 700 something um, objects and I could handle these with a different transformation set or metadata set or just into a different um, target repository or system, whatever. Okay, in this case we will use this mix set here. So now we have um, yeah, the original source data and we um, filtered yeah, some documents out and so we have a distinct doc document scope now and we want to um, transformate the attributes from SharePoint to fit into an info, info archive system, right? We we already saw that um, XML file or X, SD file, so the office office definition, office object definition, something like this. So we need to transform these values. Okay, for that you in the migration center you create such uh, transformation rules or transformation rule set which um, define, let's say, the mapping from source values to target values. Here in such an uh, info archive um, mix set, you already see the system attributes, which are called here DSS attributes, DSS application and holding. Here's the holding again, as well as the schema, the office schema here, um, as well as the other attributes. So this will be basically for the SIP description file. And all the metadata information goes into the PDA XML file and is packed into one zip file at the end um, yeah, to be archived into, my, uh, into, into Info Archive. So we will see that in a second. So here we have a um, short list of, of attributes coming from SharePoint. This is only an example here. And, and such a, a rule or source attribute contains um, functions to transform the source value or strings in this point. I don't, I, I cannot go into detail because of time, but um, you you need to know that you really quickly can change this, these rules, so you, you create function, let's say the simplest function is get value from the source system in this case, um, get value subject from source scan, um, and you can edit or manipulate this with many functions here, so all functions you can imagine to manipulate strings are represented here and you can use them into one yeah, rule or one attribute just to change values as you need them or merge values in, into each other for example. So yeah, after, after 
um, let's say this is a one by one mapping basically and we also have this office type here which uh, here are the attributes and we uh, associated um, these attributes one by one as you can see and yeah, this is basically the easiest setup you do here as well as we have some information here and in this is only yeah, basic or example information as well. For example, important one is the holding here because we go into the holding bucket on the InfoArchive site. Yeah, once you did these things, so set up the transformation rules, but the Migration Center can also help you here with quickly generate rules like this. You save this configuration and then apply the transformation which just applies all the transformation rules on, on the source data and you can have a look on the processed objects here, let's say what you did with the data and you see we have some um, yeah, transformated data now, we have here um, customer department, application, retention date and, and, and so on. So just uh, very quickly to show you how, how easily is, is it is to change the value here, let's take the, the, the name maybe or customer whatever, you could just go into transformation rules again. Um, go to the appropriate or to the corresponding rule and for example add a concatenate rule a function here. You can uh, relate to the previous step and then just enter yeah, new values. Just save it again, re-roll back the previous made changes, apply the transformation again and now the value is is um, yeah changed. So this is just very quick example how to change values here and how easily and quickly you can let's say design your data until you have your uh, desired results. Okay, so the next uh, very next step is then to apply the validation and this means you validate the attributes um, um, limitations let's say against the schema so you would now know now that you won't, uh, that your data won't fit into the target repository because of the attributes exceed in length or um, mandatory attributes are missing and so on, so you would see that now, otherwise they would not be validated at this point. Okay, once you have this data in validated mode, you just create an importer. An importer is, is quite like a scanner here, you give it a name, choose an adapter type and yeah, the job server which should do the processing and then you have the yeah, info archive corresponding parameter. Um, for example, you have this XSLT files folder where the XLST for the XML transformation are in. You have um, yeah, a target directory of course, in this case we set up a, a SIP receive folder which automatically take up the SIP file to, to process it further in info archive. You can set up a result XML pass here. Um, as well as you yeah, have the batch mode option. You can limit uh, the objects per size and per account in, within a zip and also um, can define an extra um, script or pass to a script which should be triggered after the zip was created. Okay, next step is to choose the mix set in, within this importer and then we let it run. So here it is running and it created 117 objects now. Let's have a look to the folder. Um, this is log folder and this is a yeah, info archive folder so we have created, just created this zip file here and yeah, with an ID name or the date in it and an ID, a run ID so it's unique name and we can have a short look to the contents so yeah, we have created this XML files here, as you may know these, so we have um, this SIP XML file as well as the PDI XML file with containing all the metadata from the content files. Okay, that's it. So now the Migration Center has done its job. So the zip file is um, placed on the right location, let's say, and so the info archive processes can take over here and get this zip file into the info archive system which is my keyword to pick up the screen again. Um, uh, so, last thing Mike showed us is how he placed the file on the, um, on the share that, uh, on the info archive machine that we set up here for our testing purposes and um, 
we have set up our infra archive system that it monitors this share and automatically imports all files that are placed there into the system. Um, and um, well, process it, it, it so it, it um, the data is archived in infra archive and can be accessed using any type of search GUI. Um, the the info archive import process um, is called ingestion, um, which is a, another wording from the from the OAS standard, um, and it actually consists of four separate steps. Uh, the first one is the receiver. Um, the receiver will take the file from this from the share um, and simply put it into info archive without um, much processing instead of some very simple verification. Um, so um, as we see now, uh, the file just disappeared. So Info Archive has picked it up and placed it in the system, which I will show you now. And we've set up this location for the um, for the holding that that we're working with for the office holding, and um, with the current it's it's set up with the current date. And um, if we compare this file name to what we've just seen, we would see that it's just been imported, and it's now waiting for the ingestion. Uh, the second step. Of this um, of the import process is the so-called enumeration. Um, usually, when you set up Info Archive in your environment, you would have um, several chains of imports, uh, which would all pump data into Info Archive, and you'd have some kind of priorities, uh, which SIP has to has to be archived first. And um, this is what the enumeration process does, and will pass then the SIP with the highest priority to the um, to the ingestion to the actual ingestion process with it which is step three of our of our um, of our four steps and this is where the where the most work is done this is where info archive processes all your files that you've um, that you've placed on the share or wherever you, you do that and um, um, it will it will transform the data for um, for use with info archive and um, we will probably see this uh, Forgot to this. Uh, it's status, as you can see, the status in the last, uh, on the right hand side is updating query metadata, compress content, uh, and import. And um, it ends up in waiting commit. At this point, um, the ingestion process is completed. The data is ready in the archive, is, um, it's placed everywhere um, it is needed. Um, to be searched and to be retrieved later on, but it is not yet committed to the um, to the archive. And this is the fourth and final step of the of the um, of the ingestion or the import process, uh, which which should start any second now. Um, in many cases, you will have several files that belong together, and uh, the last step will only happen when all of these files are ready. And now we see it's completed, and at this point. Uh, finally, our AIP, as it is called now, the transformed SIP, um, is now searchable. And um, so the last thing I will show you today is the the Info Archive search application. EMC delivers a very basic but very powerful application that you can use to search for the archive, uh, that you can search for data within the archive. Um, and we've set up a search form for our office holding here. Um, which with with a very simple um, search searches like um, basically only the creation date and an optional title, and um, we should now be able to find the data that Mike just imported. This is the German local time right now, and um, you can access the metadata through this um, through this search GUI, and you can also retrieve the files should you need them. This is probably only a simple Excel file. Uh, there's a GIF image, just to sh show you some things. Yeah. Uh, one final thing, as I still have a minute left, um, as Info Archive is designed to support very high amounts of data, um, it is recommended to only keep the most important data in your in your live database for searches um, for for data that you only access very infrequently, uh, you can um, configure background searches 
uh, that will search in all the um, all the data that is available versus just the active data in within info archive and um, these searches are processed in the background it will take a minute or two and you will you will be, will be sent a notification um, when the search is done and you can then access the background searches here uh, the search forms that we've just seen is also configured within the archive holding it's in a separate location so this is also an XML um, an XML configuration file that defines what your search form looks like and there's another file uh, which I've, I think I've shown briefly before uh, which is the style sheet that shows how the XML metadata is um, shown on screen yet again an XML file so you see um, info archive is a lot about XML and um, with this I will I'd say I finished my short presentation of info archive so thank you, Mike and Dennis, uh, for your demonstration of Info Archive. It was very interesting. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time. I already mentioned if you have questions, please send us uh, a mail directly. And yeah, thanks, everyone, and uh, have a good day. Thank you.